Hi everyone, we're just gonna wait for some people to filter in and then we'll get started. Yeah, we'll just wait one more minute to let everyone get logged in. Make sure you can see it here. You can just sit back and relax, um, introduce yourself in the chat if you like as well. Oh, Greg, I can see your notes. Got it. Better now? Yes. All right, well, let's get started. Um, good evening and welcome to the Milwaukee Public Library book chat. Each month we focus on a different thing and occasionally bring in guests from the public. My name is Beth and I'm the adult librarian at the East Bridge Library. With me tonight is my co-host and esteemed colleague, Greg, who is a manager at the Seventh branch. Um, throughout the evening, feel free to use the chat box to interact with each other and to share your own book or movie recommendations if you have them. We'll have time for questions for our, our special guests, so please use the Q&A box to submit those to Greg and I. As always, we invite everybody to sit back and relax and enjoy the interview. We'll be sending you um, the recording and all of the things we talk about tonight in a follow-up email, so no need to take notes. All right, and without further ado, let's introduce our special guest. Um, tonight we have with us Christopher Pollard from Milwaukee Film. He is an artist and illustrator and has been the membership manager for Milwaukee Film for the past 10 years. Born in St. Louis, Missouri, he moved to Milwaukee 10, 20 years ago to work for the Harry W. Schwartz Bookshops and has called Wisconsin his home ever since. His love for film is only rivaled by his love for books. Welcome and thank you so much for being here tonight. How are you? Yeah, so <laughs> yeah, it's great to be here. Awesome. So. Um, you're not originally from Milwaukee, so tell us a little bit about growing up and um, did you love your public library as a kid where you were living? Oh, yeah. What? Yeah, so I grew up outside of St. Louis in a small town called Wentzville, which is just like it sounds. Uh, it's very <laughs> small towny. Um, but I do remember, my mom claims that I like this I think she's exaggerating, but I like this fact. Mm -hmm. She claims that I could I started reading at age two. She said we we're the doctor's office and then I could make out the words in the kids' books. Now, I don't believe her because my mom loves to exaggerate, but I <laughs> but I, I like telling that story anyway. But yeah, she used to take me to a real small library we had in town. And I love picking out like five or six books and taking them home. And the, there's the smell to the library that I still, it's like a definite sense memory. Mm -hmm. and I remember loving it. And I read a lot as a kid. There was like a area, I'd say in like, between like middle school and early high school where I didn't read that much. And then I got really back into it once I got into like high school, kind, of, kind of got my footing in high school. And then ever since I read a ton, but yeah, from originally from outside St. Louis, I like that you said St. Louis, cause that made it, that made it feel real, real. Is home. that how you say it? Where you're Not from? at all, but. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, all. oops. <laughs> like, you know, meet me in St. Louis. It's still mm -hmm. got, I mean, you know, for fun, you, you say it that way. So I liked it. <laughs> we had a guest on um, like last week and he was, it's from the Hebrides in Scotland and we were oh yeah figuring out, you know, how to say certain things. So oh, yeah, give never, him a best go. <laughs> <laughs> Good times. Um, so you moved here to Milwaukee um, to be, was it to get the job at Harry W. Schwartz or what brought you here? Yeah, I had a friend who moved up here to go to UWM and her and her boyfriend at the time, we we all helped her move. And I just was here just for fun, just helping her move and exploring the town. And I genuinely fell in love with Milwaukee within the weekend. And I'd been working at a, like a big chain bookstore. I worked at bookstores uh, for like 10 or, 10, 10 or more years. But I was working at a big corporate bookstore I didn't care for. And I came up here and I saw the Harry Schwartz bookshops and I loved them. And just on a lark, I applied. And by the time I got back to St. Louis, I got an interview and then I got hired. So it was very sudden and it's and I'm not a spontaneous person. It was the most spontaneous thing I've ever done. So within a month of visiting Milwaukee, I moved here. <laughs> it was a great, it was a great choice. It was like, 
really a great uh, move for me. And I worked for the shops until they closed uh, mm -hmm. a little bit before and then, you know, moved on and eventually got the job at Milwaukee Film. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, we're glad that's, that's to have you jump. in the city. Yeah, it's a big jump. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, from, right. from books to film, how did that happen? I know. I know. <laughs> and straight too far, just to, you know. <laughs> that's so great. Um, let's see. So you're now the membership manager for Milwaukee Film. What yeah. does that entail for you? Yeah, so we have this incredible membership program that um, it's a way for the community to support what we do. And at the same time, they get all these great benefits. Um, so I and I and I manage that. I mean, that's it, that's the simple version of it. But a lot of it is really forming a relationship with all of our members, which has been incredibly easy to do because they are very kind. They're very and they're very they really engaged. So I talk to them in a, what we have a, a monthly member screening. So if you become a member, there's a free film for you every month that we program ourselves. It's not just like whatever happens to be playing. It's something specifically for members. So I see them every month at that. We email, I email with them all the time, different communications. They have questions. I answer them. It's really great. Uh, the benefits are amazing uh, and it really helps support what we do. Um, but it, it's really grown. Like when I started, we had like 450 members. And right before the pandemic hit, we were on our way to 6,000 members. So yeah, it grew really, really fast. But um, everyone has been so, like, you know, I was talking about, I worked retail for so long. And when I got the job at Milwaukee Film, I'm like, oh, I got to work for the, work with the public again. And I was like, Ugh, this is going to be terrible. <laughs> it is the exact opposite experience I had <laughs> working retail where everyone came in and was the worst version of themselves. <laughs> in this case, everyone is just so supportive and kind. And it makes my job, you know, I don't want to tell people my job's easy because it, it's, you know, I work hard, but mm -hmm. they make it easier than it could be. <laughs> um, so really, it's just about that relationship with our community and our membership uh, organization, you know, our membership program supports all the great stuff that we're able to do in the community with our education programs, our filmmaker services, the upkeep and the maintenance of the beautiful Oriental Theater, which it's amazing that that's a place we get to frequent so much mm -hmm. and take care of, but they they support everything that we do in those realms, and so we try to pay them back with some great benefits and show them great movies. So it's been great. It's been really nice. Yeah, I mean, I personally know so many Milwaukee film members, yeah. and um, you know, I work at the East Branch Library, so we're right across yeah, the neighbors. street. Yep, we're neighbors, and we've hosted, you know, many of the talk sessions from the films, and now that you're at the theater permanently year-round, that's been just really awesome, and we're so happy to be seeing, like, come back to that area, because yeah. it was sad for the past couple of years, and we've been missing out on it. No, so, absolutely. It was so nice, you know, since we've had the, we just came off of the film festival, and I mean, we had also seen people back in the theater, you know, prior to the film festival, but we understood it was like a slow, you know, dip your toe back in, a little cautious, totally understandable. So we expected that. Mm -hmm. But during the festival, it was so nice to see, you know, big groups of people come back. Uh, honestly, it sounds weird, but I love seeing the lines. Like, I granted, I'm not in them, but, <laughs> but I would go <laughs> hang out with people in line. It was just nice to see people lined up getting ready to go see a movie. And I have found that in the Midwest, especially in the Midwest festivals, people are like the lines are great but honestly they people chat with each other I've talked to so many people who meet each other and become friends because they're like oh what have you seen have you heard this is good and like on and on so that's been kind of amazing but yeah it's nice to see people back so, so the, much. the film festival just ended last week right yeah last Thursday you're gonna have to tell us what your favorite film was oh happily happily I can't and when, when asked what my favorite anything is, I can never give you one answer because I'm not good at paring it down. <laughs> Me neither. It's okay. <laughs> I'll just give you two or three. Uh, one was um, the, uh, the Velvet Queen, which is this unbelievable looking nature documentary about these men who go into the Tibetan mountains looking for a snow leopard, which is a very elusive animal to find despite whether they find it or not you see a ton of other animals and wildlife and these beautiful landscapes 
and their sh- the the photography in it is stunning. And I kept saying it's like the most beautiful game of Where's Waldo you've ever seen because mm-hmm. you're looking at this beautiful landscape and all of a sudden you're like, oh wait, look right there. Then you see an animal that's just sort of hiding in the, and then they pop out. It's really stunning. So that one was definitely like a hit. I mean, and seeing that on the big screen is that's what going to movies is about. And then there's another film. I like the quirkier films and we're going to talk about some of them I know. And I, that is really my cup of tea. I like a lot of different kinds of films, but I always find something special about those really imaginative ones. And there's a film called Apples, which is a Greek film. Um, and it is the concept of it, of the, it's fiction, the concept of it. Oh yeah, someone saw, someone saw Apples. Oh yeah, you put that. Uh, <laughs> I was like, oh, we got an Apples fan there. Um, but the idea is that uh, there's a town, a city in which there's an outbreak of amnesia. So there's a little fantastical element there, but you see this program that's developed by the city to help people create new memories and new personas after they've lost their memory, which is a really, it's actually a very sweet film and it's funny, but it's very like deadpan funny, which is also, I love that too. But that one was a really interesting idea that they made into this somber yet sweet film. I like that a lot. And and that you have to watch that one with subtitles, yeah, it's... Yeah, that one was a Greek film. Yeah. And I think the Velvet Queen was French as well. But the and the narration on it is beautiful. Actually, I think it's a a nature photographer that goes out, but also he brings a writer with him. So they go out and there's a beautiful, the narration is very poetic. It's lovely. Yeah, to put those on my list. Yeah, those two are, are, are fantastic. All right. So since we're since we're talking about seeing seeing movies, I think we have to ask you this: yeah. um, popcorn or candy at the movie theater? Oh, <laughs> this is easy for me because I <laughs> I love I popcorn. To. I think and I love popcorn, and and the Oriental does have delicious have popcorn. popcorn. In fact, when we started doing when we had to do member screenings uh, virtually for a while, uh, we did have a ton of people say can I just come pick up some popcorn and then take it home which was really delightful um but I've always found it to be such a strange um snack to have at a movie where you're supposed to be quiet because it is can be a fairly loud snack mm-hmm. so but I still indulge I'm not saying you shouldn't buy all the popcorn at the Oriental Theater as much as you can <laughs> ruin your health go for it uh, <laughs> but for me I would, I'm more of a candy guy. I'm all about Sour Patch Kids. Only in movies. That's the only time I have them. Oh, yeah. See, I'm not, I'm less of a fruity candy. I'm more of like a chocolate Mm. kind of guy. But an occasional Skittle will make its way into my mouth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, I was always Junior Mints or Popcorn. And Mm -hmm. recently, I finally dipped my toe back into going to the theater because I very much missed it. And I've been getting... I've been getting an icy because I can have a straw and I can wear my mask and just kind of. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to recommend my fiance likes this. I believe, I believe mm-hmm. she's the one that turned me onto this junior mints in your popcorn. I thought that would be really good. Cause it kind of get melty. Yeah. A little sweet, a little salty. That's shoot. I'm doing that next time. <laughs> for, for my move, my first movie back into the world, I went to the Oriental. And had oh, a great perfect. time. I think I went to saw James Bond, the new James yeah. Bond movie. Mm-hmm. That was actually a great movie to get people back because it was a big movie people were waiting for. So it was really nice. Like, come on back, watch James Bond, and you'll then you'll see it's safe. We also got we also really wanted to let everybody, you know, we we had you, you know uh protocols in place right at the beginning when the city was doing that. And another thing I love to tell people is that during the um the renovations and the restorations that we did we installed a top of the line air filtration system. It's the same one that like Google and the Mayo Clinic use. Um, And that made me personally feel better knowing that the air was literally being cleaned (laughs) regularly through the day. And when I tell people that they're like, oh, okay. That made me feel Mm -hmm. a little bit better. So So I don't have any allergies in here, maybe. Yeah. (laughs) Absolutely. Yeah, I don't, I for one really appreciate it. All the communication 
that was sent out by your organization and about the theater and what we could do to help and the movies we could see when we were at home. It was just wonderful. So I really want to commend your whole team for that because um, I just felt like you stayed really connected with your people and that really helped I think a lot of people through some tough times so that's nice to hear and it's great and they I mean honestly they helped us through the time as well (laughs) like they kept us going Uh, but it was nice to be able to even though we couldn't be together you know during the thick of it Mm -hmm. it was nice to be able to still email them you know talk about the virtual films we were showing and but this was great I mean and then we started doing member screenings in person again you know last I think November Mm -hmm. or December but it was at the festival. It was just great to see everybody every day, all at once. It was kind of nice. Yeah, mm-hmm, absolutely. So beyond like a movie memory, do you have a favorite Milwaukee film like fest memory that's like silly or just something somebody might not know, but like share something fun? <laughs> absolutely. I'll do. I'll do a sweet one and then a slightly darker one. <laughs> yes. Perfect. <laughs> you know, one, a variety just like junior mints and popcorn we'll do sweet we'll do salty um i do love when i see kids come into the oriental theater um i but i've a couple times i've specifically seen a little kid come in and then just look his head just goes up and just start pointing at all the things and i think one of my coworkers said that a little girl came in once and asked if a princess lived there which just oh. made my heart melt <laughs> But it is interesting thinking about a kid is not seeing a building like this. They're going to see, if they go see their first movie at the Oriental Theater, it blows my mind knowing that that's going to be your first movie memory in this beautiful place. Mm-hmm. So I love that. That's just adorable. And then something that we had, a, this was several years ago, we had a very dark film called The Tribe. And it is a very, one of those very difficult to watch movies, um, very intense. And a woman, uh, saw it and she passed out in the middle of it so you know the, let me just say spoiler alert she's fine I don't want to worry mm-hmm. about it. she was fine but um <laughs> yeah, <it> we, sounds like <gasps> yeah, paramedic came checked her out she was fine I don't know what it was that happened but she was she recovered herself and she was fine but the best <laughs> the best thing that happens is she said I just really want to find out how this movie ends though so after all of that, she still wanted to go back and finish the film. And I was like, <laughs> one, you are a trooper. Mm-hmm. And then <laughs> two, take care of yourself. Make sure. Right. I don't know that it was the film that made her pass out. But knowing how intense of a movie it was, I was like, I hope it didn't contribute. But she was great. Good of it. Get you, you know how scary movies and intense movies, they get your blood yeah. in your mm-hmm. heart beating fast. And- right. Could have been me. I don't know. I, could be <laughs> yeah. I got to see um, The Shining when Milwaukee Film hosted mm-hmm. it on 35 mil, which was yeah. amazing. And it, I just remember like the music was so like intense and it was so good. But I was oh, like, God. I'm very on edge, but this is very... That awesome. was that was a cool <laughs> screening. We have great projectionists that come when we have 35 millimeter and projectionists, especially with like a horror movie or a movie that really calls for it, they love to turn the sound like a up like a rock concert. <laughs> so I'm sure the music was very intense. And that I remember was an absolute sellout. Like every mm-hmm. seat you were like hustling, go, oh, there's yeah. here, see here. So to know that that place, which holds over a thousand people <laughs> all together, yeah intense music and intense film that's great mm-hmm. I think that's I think the it was the former brewer John Axford, John Axford had yeah. hosted that and I remember he came out on like a tricycle and like yeah. overalls that's and I was like this is Danny. delightful <laughs> and he's like six four six five and he dressed up as the child from the film we had to get we actually had that giant uh hot like big wheel for like three years after he left because we're like we don't know what to do with this big wheel after <laughs> But it's really funny. We still talk about that. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, Got rid of it. <laughs> I, I don't know what happened. I don't know what ended up happening to it. Actually. Yeah, it's like, oh, okay. Maybe yeah. somebody's enjoying it somewhere, yeah, hopefully. Yeah, sure. <laughs> um, okay, so beyond the Oriental, do you have another favorite theater that you have visited or seen a film at that you would recommend? Like it's a bucket list item for people? Yeah, I loved... Um, I got to go to the Seattle Film Festival uh, one year. They have an amazing festival as well. Prior to the pandemic, they had, I think, the longest 
stretch. They their festival went for 28 days. Oh, wow. I don't know how you do that. I can we can barely I can barely do 15. Um, but they have a beautiful theater there called the Egyptian mm -hmm. that I really enjoyed. I like that theater a lot. Um, and another festival that I love is in Missouri, where I'm from, but I didn't know about it when I was there. Mm. It's in Columbia, Missouri, called um, the True False Festival. It's a four day documentary film festival. And I've been to it like six times. I absolutely love it. Um, they surprisingly, for the middle of Missouri, have so many nice theaters there. They have like little intimate, like cool indie ones, and they have these beautiful old, you know, with uh, old theaters with, um, with balconies and let you know it's similar like the paps it's almost like the paps uh the blue note there which is one of them they have a they have a few there may be venues that aren't always used as movie theaters but they outfit them for movies while they're there cool. but that festival in general i highly recommend and uh, if you're in missouri because i'm from missouri so i get to say i get to to yes, talk poorly about it if I if I prefer it's my my state um, you know it's one of the few parts of going back home <laughs> I like St. Louis a little bit but I let Columbia is a nice little haven in the middle of Missouri but they have a great festival and some That's beautiful awesome. yeah. That's you get so paid cool. to go to these these festivals as as market research <laughs> I mean at one point yeah <laughs> it's one point you know, a lot of the staff went to different festivals and got to report back on the films and we bring them. Um, now it's more focused, our programming team pretty much focuses, but I still go, I still go to True False when I can. Um, I just love going, you know. Awesome. I would think so, yeah. My sister-in-law lives in Telluride and oh, someday, wow, yeah. someday, so she lives there and I'm like, oh, maybe something we should try. To just, yeah, like, you got a place there. to stay. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's perfect. Mm -hmm. pretty cool okay um so what is the best film like what is one of your memories of like this was a movie that I saw in the theater and it was just like an incredible experience like either audience reaction or oh yeah just the, there's two one I remember it's one of the few times at the festival I stayed up past midnight I mean it's easy to do because there's a lot going on mm -hmm. but I was like as soon as I can go home I'm gonna go home I'm so tired but I did stay up many years ago at midnight. We showed uh, Enter the, Bruce Lee's Enter the Dragon on 35 millimeter. And I really liked seeing that with the whole crowd. So that's a really fun movie to mm -hmm. see on the big screen. That one was a highlight. And then I did get to go to Sundance one year, uh, which was a really cool experience. Um, and I saw uh, Yorgos Lanthimos as The Lobster. Oh, that was a good one. The Lobster I loved. And that that kind of got me onto this whole, this small crew of um, Greek filmmakers. Apples that I mentioned earlier is sort of mm -hmm. at the tail end of a thing that they were referring to as the Greek weird wave, which is a great name for a handful, a small handful of filmmakers that were just making these kind of odd concept films. But The Lobster was such, it was like right up my alley. It was such a strange and funny and, you know, a little bit morose film. But um, the audience there, it was packed and everyone was cracking up and it was a challenging movie and it was a strange movie but everyone was on board <laughs> and i just love it when everyone is we're all in the same direction we're all really liking the same things and just everyone's audience reaction was so nice um so I, those two were, were our standouts for me yeah it's, it's, it's totally different when you're at a film because you know like a film is a very individual thing you know it's how, it's how you are interpreting it and experiencing right. it but then when you're at a theater you know it, it like it brings this whole like group aspect yeah. into it i saw even the, without talking you know mm -hmm. yeah i saw the movie later with a much smaller crowd and no one was laughing and i just found that so interesting like these mm -hmm. very different i mean i feel like when you have more people, the more people you have, the more people are comfortable reacting. Mm -hmm. It could just be they didn't like the movie. That's fine. But it also could be that thing of like, oh, I don't want to be the first one to laugh at this, you know. Right. It's a one where you either have a confused look on your face or you're laughing. Yeah. You know, it's just one of the two. Exactly. Or both. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> I just remember I saw, I think, one of the Hobbit movies on yeah. like a Christmas like either Christmas Eve or Christmas Day, we're like, why don't we just go? It'll be fun. And like my friend and I, we were like laughing up the storm because Hobbits are being silly. And this woman was like, shh, I was like, oh, making no. jokes. I'm supposed to laugh. 
fine. Listen, I love it when people shush people appropriately in a movie because I'm not very confrontational, mm-hmm. but I get very mad when people are like, like talking, you know, or you can't yeah. shush people for laughing if you're in no. Like they're Oops. in the barrels floating down the river. It's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> you were like, no, I know, see, I know exactly what scene you're talking about. And yeah. that is it's should, supposed that's... to be funny. It's not like you're Aragorn's right. fighting orcs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh good times yeah i really miss being in like kind of that electric that's how it feels to me it's like this electric environment where you're sitting and having like a community experience that you can't replicate at home like i watch movies with my kids and they're just like yeah (laughs) and i'm like crying and they're like what's the matter with you (laughs) how are you not reacting (laughs) And people yeah. aren't on their on their phones in the movie theater, you know. Like sometimes I look over mm-hmm. my wife or you oh. know, like friends, and they're on their phones while we're watching a movie at the house. Mm-hmm. But in the theater, yeah. that's a, like everyone's mm-hmm. just yeah, okay, they're doing it. Hopefully they are, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah otherwise, <laughs> <laughs> oh man, okay. Um, so. Not only are you the creative or the membership director at Milwaukee Film, you're also an amazing artist. So we, you, you know, looked up some of your work, and we'll we'll show everyone um some examples when we turn our slides back on. Oh, sure. Um, how did that happen for you? Have you always drawn? I noticed you do a lot of commercial and commission work too. So yeah, um, it's weird when I was a when I was a little kid, I loved to draw, and when I hang out with my cousin, who was like my best friend when I was a kid, we he'd always ask what we want to do. And I, that was my go-to, like, let's draw superheroes. Let's make up superheroes and draw superheroes. <laughs> I really want to do that. And he was like, rarely in the mood to do that. So I loved doing it then, but then I, somewhere along the way, I lost it until I, until I actually moved to Milwaukee. Before, before Milwaukee, I, I did collages a little bit because I didn't really think I had the ability to draw like I would want to draw. But so I did collages that were, I really enjoyed. And I still do that once in a while. But a friend of mine named Mike, uh, Brian Paterka, who's a great artist, he had a thing in Milwaukee called the Wednesday, the Wednesday Night Drawing Auxiliary, which was a kind of tongue-in-cheek, lofty title for this group that just got together to make stuff. And one day I went there and I didn't have any of my materials with me, so I just started doodling and drawing um, with his really good pens, which was very helpful, actually. Uh, <laughs> and then ever since then, I just started drawing more and more. Uh, so it wasn't until I moved here like 20 years ago that I started drawing really. And then and it's, that was like, I it just clicked and I knew that's what I wanted to keep doing. That's awesome. Um, what has been some of your favorite commissioned work that you've gotten to create? I saw that you definitely have made stuff from Milwaukee film, but has there been other places too? Yeah. The Milwaukee film stuff is really fun because it's, they, they I mean, at first, Jonathan was like, I want to see what you come up. I want to, you tell me what you're going to do first. And now we've got <laughs> a place where he kind of just lets me do it. He doesn't really <laughs> check, but uh, that's just fun. Cause every year we do, I do the member shirts and uh, which is like a benefit of a certain level. And I just think what film would be great to put on a shirt this year. And I do some, some illustration of a, a popular film, but um, it is really fun to do. I get a lot of portrait commissions, which is really funny. It's always funny to me that people ask me to do it because my style is is quirky and mm-hmm. sometimes a little strange. And so, but P, I, I really appreciate the people who like, no, I want my face, but that way. Mm-hmm. They <laughs> so, love your aesthetic, yeah. <laughs> so I'm always surprised and delighted that they let me do just kind of like a little weird little scene with them in it and they find it fun. So yeah, I do, I do enjoy doing that. Um, but uh, yeah, I do a lot of pop culture stuff lately, just a lot of figures. It's honestly, I draw stuff that I would like to collect. Like I love art and I love, you know, I love actually, I love book illustration very much. Mm-hmm. And it's something I would definitely like to get into. And, uh, but like some, I've been drawing a lot of my favorite authors um, and my favorite directors and musicians and other figures that I, that I have a connection to. And so I just draw them because it's something I would like to see, like I would like to have. So I've been doing that a lot. Um, But also I just do random strange scenes and (laughs) and just weird little, little doodles. I love that so much. One of my other 
favorite local artist from around here is her name is rad illustrates and she does butt portraits have yeah. you have you met her like it's my goal to like be able to like commission art from like you and like her like i just okay. love yeah. everyone's style so much and it it just makes me happy <laughs> oh yeah i do i think we may have met briefly i do know who she is mm -hmm. um but yeah it's really funny uh yeah i think we were at like hovercraft fair together and now she's just doing those like little quickie portraits for people which were really fun uh, but yeah, she's great. But that is mm -hmm. nice. Well, there's a lot of amazing artists in the city. And Hovercraft is like such a nice venue. It's usually right before like beginning of December. And you mm -hmm. see just like 70 or 100 vendors doing all sorts of different things. And it's it's a nice place to gather to see what's going on. Heck yes. We just had um, Zine Fest at Central Library back in person, was which I was bet. cool. Yeah, I did too. It was really nice. And Oh, somebody said you should make a zine. I have. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I thought so. I thought I saw that. Very cool. Um, yeah, I think the library, actually the central library, when I went one time in the rare books room where the glass is like, uh, you yeah. can see they had yeah. put out the zines and they put one of my books out. because so I have a couple of zines and then I have a book uh, that I put out of, it's like made up rap, uh, hip hop icons. Like I made up hip hop uh, icons and drew them and and put information about each one and little sample lyrics oh nice so it's called fake ass rappers and it's literally fake rappers and um it's one of my favorite things i've ever done but i made a book of it but they had i the library asked for one for their archives and i was so delighted i was like you're yeah. kidding me my book's gonna be in the library it's by k Polly, right yeah, exactly. yeah. We, yeah have, we have we have the man. the link to it you're right it is oh, yes. the rare books. <laughs> i'm looking at it right now yep there you go you'll have to come down to the central library though everyone to check it out yeah absolutely in the precious room <laughs> <laughs> that's great awesome. all right so should we show some of this art that, i think you have the yeah uh, a lot of the ones you were talking about here Cool. Um, while you pull the slides up, we do have an audience question for oh, you. Yeah. So um, we'll ask a couple right now. And then if everyone you can keep putting them in the Q&A and we'll ask them if, if the leftovers at the end. Um, Christina would like to know, Christopher, what is your favorite movie based on a book? Oh, wow. That is hard. Um, I do. I mean, Wizard of Oz is a really good one. I love the Wizard of Oz and I love the book. Um, there's a, there's a vampire movie from, I want to say Switzerland or Sweden, Sweden, I think called let the right one in. Oh. It is the only, the only instance I can think of where I did not like the book better. Uh, <laughs> I read the book and I didn't care for the book, even though it's very true to the movie, the movie was a faithful, uh, telling of it, but I liked the movie so much better. Life did you watch it first or read it first i did watch it first okay. so that, that could have colored it but even other things that i've watched the movie first and then read the book usually i can see like oh i enjoy the prose of this better and you know mm -hmm. it's not it doesn't feed it to you as much but no that that was quite the opposite for that one but um yeah let the right one in wizard of oz is fantastic um um uh oh what's the james baldwin beale street if yeah. beale street could talk no, uh, or, that's close it's on the tip of my tongue I, I know last week oh I'm blanking on looking the, it up Beale Street by James Baldwin either way that movie adaptation was yeah, beautiful Bill, if Bill Street could talk if Bill Street could talk thank you yeah. yeah that's a great adaptation and a great book yeah there's a bunch of them awesome um somebody said that they like the movie shop girl better than the book usually the book is best i like that that's the steve too. martin one right mm -hmm. oh, that's hard for me because i love steve martin so much <laughs> <laughs> i understand i understand Edith. it's okay um so yeah on screen you can see um i just took some grabs off of your instagram and your oh, website yeah. so this is um, K. Polly's art, which is amazing. I was really drawn to. Um, there was a Dolly Parton one, I think. I didn't oh yeah. Here, so you'll have to all go look it up on Instagram. So I also, <laughs> I also am glad that you included a picture of my dog down there. Mm -hmm. What's your dog's name? <laughs> my dog's name is Grandpa Joe. <laughs> oh. <laughs> named after a movie I'm going to talk about soon, 
uh, <laughs> Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, yeah, Kelly knows Grandpa. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, <laughs> and then some of these here are from a series of movie posters I did for the September Club, which is a local uh, filmmaking group. They make a bunch of great films. They edit. They they're involved in a lot of incredible films and. They have a project with me, which I love, which is every so often they have me do an alternative poster to some of the movies they've been involved with. And so like Jawbreak, so Don't Break Down, the Jawbreaker movie and the Jeffrey Dahmer Files. Those are a couple examples up there of those. Mm-hmm. I love That's that. A, actually, if you want to talk about a, a job that I really love, that's a, one job that I love that I get to do is, is, that, is that series, yeah. That's awesome. I was like, oh, I love that Princess Leia fantasy poster. Oh, that was from our fifth year of the festival where we did a campaign. Um, it was all the drama you'd expect from a five-year-old because we were the five-year-old. And we did all the fantasy you'd expect, all the comedy you'd expect from a five-year-old, which was a fun concept. And then That's we just awesome. children and put them in the, in the place of all these famous uh, film scenes. I love it. I do want to say to all the Star Wars fans, I know that Princess Leia did not use a lightsaber. She should have. <laughs> we know that, but we were not about to put a gun in the hands of a five-year-old. <laughs> so we had to take some liberties. So don't get at me online. <laughs> no, in my I heart, did. she did. So it's yeah. acceptable. I feel like me. at some point she must have, yeah. Yeah, canon, it's fine. In, in your, your Blade triolog- trilogy, uh, oh, I like the thing at the bottom. That's oh yeah. Little tiny, little tiny <laughs> what does it sheet. say, Greg? Can you read it? It says, "Will they or won't they?" Takes three movies to find out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> little nod to uh, Blade fan fiction, where <laughs> it's always our Whistler <laughs> and Blade ever going to make out. And <laughs> I, I have a real, a real soft spot for the Blade movies because they're. They're both really genuinely good and genuinely bad at the same time, which <laughs> is a lovely combination. The, the third, I, I think the, the last one is just pretty bad, but the first one is pretty good. I am the only one you'll meet who thinks <laughs> the, the third one is my favorite, but it is because it is so earnestly bad and then also <laughs> genuinely funny in many parts. I'm a, I'm a Blade Trinity apologizer or whatever. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> That's me in the Star Wars prequel. So well, we're all yeah. friends here. You know, yeah. it's like. You have a harder okay. time than me then. Yeah, yeah I, I do. I'm like, I was 13. Okay. And Ewan McGregor okay. was very cute with that no, braid. And I don't care. <laughs> case, they're they're very the bad. <laughs> I was a fully developed adult when I watched these movies. So I have no excuse. <laughs> <laughs> they're fun. I don't care. Uh, yeah. You're right. <laughs> all right. Um. Yeah, love it. So um, if everyone would like to see more of Christopher's artwork, you can find it on his Instagram or his website. And we'll, we'll include links to that um, in our follow-up email. All right, why don't we jump into some recommendations? Oh, yeah. So Christopher, you're up first. Um, I pulled the cover of the movie for Woman in the Dunes because I was struggling to find a book cover and this one oh, was sure. great for me, so. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So just, I can just go for it? Yep. Okay, I'm gonna st- I'll start with Lamb. That's a, I think the most recent. Uh, lamb is a very strange. Oh, you know what? That's actually a different Lamb. I think. That's my fault. I didn't. I didn't indicate which Lamb. <laughs> Whoops. We can but find the right one. Let me. Find that it. Lamb looks much less bizarre than the one I'm talking about. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that looks right. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's okay. The the Lamb uh, came out just a couple of years ago or maybe last year no just last year i think um and it's a very very strange film about a, uh two people living on a farm and they have you know farm animals and stuff and they sort of adopt a lamb child a half lamb half human baby <laughs> and then hijinks ensue <laughs> essentially a very dark but actually kind of sweet premise of this lamb human that they take in and the the sheep are a little a little territorial about as well so there's a bit of a feud and there's a moment and i i I hope people will be brave and check out this film because it is a strange film 
And there's a moment in that film though, where I was just shocked about was the thing that happens <laughs> was so surprising to me. And I smile, even though it was strange what was happening, I was smiling from ear to ear. Genuinely, I had the thought while I was watching this movie, like, oh, that's right. You can just do whatever you want in the movie. <laughs> you can even do this. It's so bizarre. And I laughed, maybe inappropriately laughed, <laughs> this very strange thing that happened. Anyway, I mean, the whole movie's bizarre, but I just love a movie that surprises me like that. So you're already going in knowing it's an odd film, and then you're surprised on top of that. Very impressive. So that was Lamb. Um, and then I'll do the other movie too. Uh, that's just, you know, people ask you what your favorite film is. That's a very difficult question, but my go-to is always Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. I've, I don't even remember if I saw it as a child, honestly. I'm sure I saw it when I was like a teenager. Um, but this is like the kind of movie that I wish still existed. It's, we have, you know, we have access to a lot of technology now for films, which is great. I'm not like a, oh, I don't want any technology in my movies. Not at all. But I do love a movie that didn't have those advantages and still comes up with this colorful, incredibly imaginative fantasy world um, and absolutely based on these like completely precious uh, kids books by Roald Dahl. Yes, Gene Wilder. Thank you, Enid. Enid, you and I are best friends. Gene Wilder is a genius. <laughs> He's genuinely one of my favorite human beings of all time. He's, I think, it's and from Milwaukee, right? Isn't it? Yeah, he is absolutely yeah. from Milwaukee. He's one of ours. And uh, he, I think the best thing about him is that he, I think he even said this, I'm not even trying to be funny. I'm trying to play the character earnestly, which you really see, like, he's not necessarily doing anything particularly hilarious. It's just funny because he's so believable in what he's doing. Um, that plus just the plot and the characters in the movie are phenomenal. So the dog's name is Grandpa Joe. I do have a, um, this is my everlasting gob top, gobstopper tattoo. I'm definitely uh, an obsessed, the snozberries do taste like snozberries, uh, <laughs> obsessed with the movie. So that, those are my two movie recommendations. And then I wanted to choose some books that have this, I, I like a lot of different kinds of books, but I do, like I said, I like these stories that have just an element of something that's slightly beyond the real, um, an element of the fantastic, or even if it's not strictly fantastical, it's just a, a, like this enlarged situation or something a little bit, a little bit bizarre or, or interesting. And, you know, ima imagination is the key. Um, so first I'll talk about the instructions by Adam Levin is such an interesting book about a young man who, like a young boy, he's going to a school for, for uh, kind of troubled kids, kids are causing problems. And he develops this whole, like relig almost a religious following in his school and creates this little culture and world in his school based around him. He's definitely a kind of like a Messiah type character, but uh, this kind of, it's, it's just an, just a breath away from being genuinely magic. <laughs> it's, he just has such charisma that he creates this following that kind of becomes this rebellious force in this school. Um, that, and it's also the biggest book I've ever taken on a plane. It's a huge, and I have it here. So it's like almost as thick as my head. And I, was in the middle of it when I had to go on a plane and it's just, this is the most ridiculous book to open on a plane, but I couldn't put it down. So I, I had to, I had to keep going. Uh, that one, um, Shirley Jackson's, we have always lived in the castle. I love, I love Shirley Jackson and me and my fiance, we both really got into her. There's one point where both of us were sitting on the couch, each reading a Shirley Jackson book. And I was like, oh yeah, we're gonna get married. We are gonna marry this person. And that was <laughs> one of the many indications, but um, but yeah, we've always lived in the castle is just this strange family dynamic. It's got a bit of mystery to it. And the the characters in this family are so quirky and strange that again, it has that element of the fantastic without actually being a fantasy. 
And then lastly, uh, I love Kobo Abe. He's one of my favorite authors, uh, Japanese author. And Woman in the Dunes is, I think, the first book I read by him. And I think it's probably his most famous book. Uh, it's about this entomologist who gets trapped in this town, this very sandy town, and he gets he misses his bus and the people of the town put him up for the night in sort of this depressed little home within the sand and he cannot get out and they don't want him to come out. The sand will collapse if he tries to leave and there's all these interesting things they do to keep him in there um, and they try to get him to help dig out their eternally shifting and be a town that's being buried all the time <laughs> and so he's they just keep him to work him and they send this woman in there um to sort of be a companion to him and they develop a relationship again this very odd scenario that turns into this weird little world below the sand so i love those books the, again i love you know nonfiction. i like a straight mystery i just like classics but it the books that have this heightened level of imagination always impress me just like a little bit more than anything else. So those are my recommendations. Yay, those are great. And then again, don't worry, everyone we will include all of these um, in our follow-up for you with links so you can get them for yourself. All right, I think Greg, you're next. All right, so I uh, chose three books that um, had films to go along with them. Um, the let's start with the the Guernsey Literary Potato Peel Society. This was when my my wife turned me on to. Of uh, it was we wanted to, she wanted to watch the Netflix thing, so we did. It's on Netflix, uh, but the book is actually uh, really nice. It, it's historical fiction, so um, if you want, you know, it tells the, the story of the society that's on the island of Guernsey, um, which is kind of in between, uh, France and England in the, in the channel area. And it was occupied by Germany during the war. Um, and this society, um, basically helped people, um, hide from Germans, um, during the time. And of course it has romantics involved in, in all of that. Um, but you know, if, if you're looking for, kind of a little bit of you know of fiction mixed with with some history of world war ii it, it might be interesting for you and and the netflix show wasn't half bad either um a man called ove i really like this one i really like frederick bachman i think he's swedish um you have to watch this one with subtitles if, if you want to watch the film um but he's got a lot of good ones i really liked man called ove because it has like this really weird humor to it like this guy is such a curmudgeon but he's like such a stand-up guy who always does everything right but he's like mean too and he's hilarious at the same time um so i i really enjoy it it's also sad and happy at the same time um so you know read it or better yet i, th I think i actually like the movie um, one of this more because the actor he was just uh, so amazing and I can't I don't I'm not going to try to pronounce his name um, but I I, I the, the actor was just so amazing how he like played this like really depressed grumpy person who yet is hilarious um, and then I, I had to include this one because um, I, I like Agatha Christie of course and she is you know the top of the charts if you want to like a fun mystery right um, so Death on the Nile I think 1937 or 1939 she published this book um, you know Hercule Poirot it's a Hercule Poirot mystery they just came out with the um, the movie Death on the Nile uh, really fantastic I enjoyed every part of it um you know it's got it's kind of like that you know really like you know what's going to happen right it's like one of those mysteries where like you know you know what's going to happen you don't know how it's going to happen but you know what's going to happen um but you know if, if you're looking for a really classic mystery with a, a you know a cool new film to go along with it this is your one All right, um, it's my turn. So I've actually been watching TV and movies a little bit more. I was really in a slump for a while and was just finding myself distracted. So I wasn't able to like watch movies and then my kids don't go to bed. So I can't watch what I wanna watch. A lot of the times I watch what they wanna watch. So anyway, I finally have been getting in some of my own time. 
Um, but I wanted to pick two movies and then a book based off a show that not based off a show, but inspired by a show that I've fallen in love with. Um, so my first one is Better Off Dead, which I chose because it was one of my favorites when I was growing up. I watched it with my cousin all the time on VHS in the basement and we would incessantly quote it. And it's coming back to the Times, which is one of my favorite local theaters for um, a Friday night free show, which I'm really excited about. And I think tickets are still available. Um, and it's in I think it's in a couple Fridays. I forget the date. I bought my ticket. I'm going. It's going to be great. He'll, that newspaper boy will want his $2 and I'm going to laugh and it'll be a really good time. Um, I've always loved John Cusack and this was just the epitome of like a silly team kind of dark rom-com and then you add in claymation and good music. <laughs> it's just a really fun time. Um, and then I've been on a Taika Watiti kind of kick and Hunt for the Wilder People is actually one of my favorite films by him. It's just, it really gut punched me. I have to say, like, I was like, oh, <laughs> when part of it happened, um, it took me out a little bit, but in a really loving way, he brought me back to like, this is why this film went this way. And like the boy actor who's now grown up and doing lots of great things he's just fantastic and it's just beautifully filmed touching and like everything I want in a movie basically and I cried and was uplifted but um you can watch it yourself now um on our canopy subscription which we have now with the library which is great so I'll include a link to that so you can use your Milwaukee public library card to check that one out and then part of my Taika Waititi kick is because I binged the show Our Flag Means Death, which right now is only available on HBO Max. So unfortunately, I can't get you that at the library. But it's just really fun um, pirate show, loosely, loosely <laughs> based on historical figures. But I would aesthetics only, let's be real. And it's just silly and funny in the perfect length, about a 25 minute long episode. And it just was both heartwarming and highlight and hilarious. And then there's kissing and it's just like, yes, this is perfect for me. Um, I read a lot of romance novels. So I wanted to kind of find things that reminded me of the feelings that that show made me have. And so that's why I chose The Queer Principles of Kit, Kit Webb, which is about a uh, man who used to be a, a thief and he's trying to give it up really hard like he's really trying but then he meets this kind of flouncy aristocrat who needs this book stolen from his father and you know he's really beautiful so why not you know use his skills to get that book back and maybe fall in love so a lot of fun like kind of a gentle vibe to read and I really enjoyed it a lot so those are my picks um, Those are great. I, I knew you were going to have one romance book. I have to. I, it's I my, you it's my to. thing. You know, yeah. I, lo I live for my happily yeah. ever after. <laughs> I love Hunt for the Wilder People so much. And my partner frequently gets the Ricky Baker song that they sing to him for his birthday stuck in her head and sings it for like a few days. Mm -hmm. um, that happens a lot, which the, is like a very catchy song. <laughs> the kid in there, I've seen him in something else. Do you know his name? He was in Deadpool 2. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And then yeah. he was in something else too that my he's kids funny. are watching. He's very he's funny. Really funny. He's, he's really good. funny. He's so funny. He's really good. Yeah. So definitely get those movies. And yeah, Canopy is really great. You get, I think, five checkouts a month with your library card. And they've got really, you know, quirky films that you're not going to find, you know, on your streaming yeah. services that you are paying for. And it's free to you as a library card holder. So definitely get that out there and a lot of documentaries and docuseries and stuff on there too mm -hmm. and i like you know how like milwaukee film will kind of curate a list based on whatever heritage month it is and you can kind right. of like have a theme night or whatever or like films by this director who i've never heard of and that's always fun yeah that's fantastic mm -hmm. um okay you want to go to the next slide so yeah i already yeah. talked about it yeah. great yeah. gonna be <laughs> <laughs> um, just a couple of events that are coming up before we get to your last few questions for Christopher. Um, tomorrow night, I'll be in conversation with local author Nevo um, to celebrate the debut of her new book, Siren Queen, which, Christopher, you might like this one. It's set in like the 1930s Hollywood era and movie theater executives are actual monsters and there's magic and magical realism and you don't 
really know how the magic works, but it's there and it's kind of scary and haunting and also um, deals a lot with racism and um, the difficult things that women, specifically women of color, dealt with in the 1930s as this woman, the Siren Queen, tries to become the top of her game in Hollywood. It's just really lyrical writing and it's very nice. So I highly recommend it for everyone. Sounds good. Oh, yeah. And if you like movies, great fit. Absolutely. Um, let's see. And then that's tomorrow at 5.30. We were asking people to pre-register, but we still do have space available. So if you want to walk in, you can do that. And we in person. I'm excited. <laughs> All right. And then next up on book chat is Mikey Cody Apollo. Um, they'll be joining us on June 14th at 6 p.m. We'll send you the registration link. That'll be a virtual event just like this one. Um, Christopher was telling us how much he admires. I love next Mikey. <laughs> she's great. Yeah, I'm really glad she's doing this. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. Um, let me read her bio. Um, a Black queer writer, filmmaker, educator, and feminist killjoy from Milwaukee. Most of their work explores themes such as race, gender, sex, and religion. Mikey is the author of a self-published collection of poetry titled Black Girls, Silence, and Other Things Made of Gold, along with many other amazing things that they're working on in the community. So we're super excited. All right. And then I think that's all of our slides. Um, that's just who I got those slides yeah. from. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um let's see so our last question is more of a comment and it's for christopher um is there a better film club membership director in the world and the answer they came up with was no so thank you oh, they really nice. answered their own question well wonderful i don't have to <laughs> chime in and be and less than humble uh, <laughs> that's very really kind thank you very much that's mm -hmm. nice yeah and then just other nice comments. This was wonderful. Thank you. Libraries are cool. We agree, obviously. And then you have lots of thank yous. So any final words for our guests or what can they expect next for you or Milwaukee Film? Where can they find you? Yeah, uh, I mean, uh, for Milwaukee Film, if you have not considered becoming a member before and have hesitated, it's a great time to become a member of Milwaukee Film. Like I said, we have a great uh, monthly member screening. Uh, which we curate just for our members. It's a good variety that throughout the year, and it's we get a lot of people in the room in, in the main house of the Oriental Theater, and we come out and we greet them and talk to them and show a great movie. So you can go to mkefilm.org slash members, and you can check out all the great benefits there. Um, we're going to be doing some really, really cool stuff. Yeah, we have. I recognize a lot of the names of the people who are watching, so a lot of you are members already, and I appreciate it. Um, oh yeah, look, all of you. I know all of you people. That's how we got uh, them here, don't you know? <laughs> yeah, that's right. yeah, look at that. Um, so yeah, it's been so much fun. Uh, so definitely check that out. We got some great films coming up at the theater. Uh, check out the Oriental uh, website, Oriental Theater website. And then yeah, if you want to see any of my artwork, my Etsy site is the best place, but you can find it through my um, Instagram or my website, kpoly.com. I'm kpolyart on Instagram. Very cool. Also, summer reading will be starting soon, I believe on June the 1st, and we already received our grand, prize, grand prizes from Milwaukee Film, so if you participate yeah. in the adult summer reading program, you might have a chance to win one of those memberships, but if you really want, I just say, just go go for it. Yeah, you yeah. can always I mean, give that you... one you win to a friend, and then you can go <laughs> together, and it's fine. <laughs> but what a good way to get a membership is just to read a bunch of books. That's nailing Pretty... it pretty cool just five over the summer that's no big yeah. deal i love it you can listen to them too read some picture books some yeah. novels. and in every branch is going to give out a, a membership right yep. so you know 13 mm -hmm. chances to win right mm -hmm. <laughs> yep that's awesome cool. all right well thank you again so much for your time we're so thrilled you were able to join us and then thanks to everyone for attending we'll be in touch in a couple of days with the recording link and all of those other great recommendations we had this evening have a good night everybody i'll see you next time thanks for coming